Today I'm gonna to be testing the rear cargo area outlet, which is right here. It specifies AC 120 volts, max 1600 watts right here. And if you know, lift it up, it has a NEMA 520 outlet. So this actually provides theoretically higher power than this does out of the charge outlet. So this will be interesting to see. Is there a difference when I charge using an EVSD connected to my Tesla Model 3 using this outlet? Let's find out how that works. First thing I need to do is connect this extender to the outlet. I am going to use this and then connect this kilowatt reader. So this has information on here. I am going to blank this out so that we have fresh information. Right now there's nothing connected to this, so it's getting zero amps, zero volts, zero everything. So what I'm gonna do is go to the front of the car and turn on this outlet and see what we get. All right, let's step into the driver's seat. I'm gonna go to, let's see, energy screen here. Ah, so interesting here that since I plugged that uh, connector into the outlet, I have the power is on. And note that you can't charge from both the charge port and the trunk outlet at the same time. It doesn't let you do that. So I am also going to adjust this to 20. And let's see what we get. I'm, I'm curious to see how many amps we can get out of that trunk outlet. And it is now on. The car is in ready. So let's see what it shows back here. Now we see 118.7 volts. Of course, nothing else is active right now because it's not plugged into anything. I am going to now plug in the EVSE. All right, so just the regular outlet plug here. Gonna connect this in. Now I'm going to leave this right here so we can watch it. And then I'll connect this end to the Tesla. All right, I have my J1772 plug with the Tesla adapter. I insert that into the car. And let's see what we get. All right, so let's turn on the car. We're in ready mode. Now I'm going to, I have the trunk power outlet is turned on. Let's see what we get in the back. All right, so we have 118.4. Let's see. And we have 12 amps or just under 12 amps. Since that is what the Tesla is set to. Let's see, we should see a blinking green. Yes, we do. Let's go inside real quick. Oh, I have to unzip this. Hold on a second. Charging stopped. Ooh, it's not happy with it. So let me go to the charge screen and see what we got here. We have it set for five amps. Let's see what we got. All right, for some reason, the car keeps turning off the outlet. Trunk power outlet is now on. Let me look again. All right, I don't know why the amps is so high on here. Oh yeah, let me turn this down a little bit and see how it goes. Let me change it to eight amps and see if this stays connected. 
All right, so it seems like it is turning off. So we are having a problem keeping this on. It seems when I'm out of the seat and the car is out of ready, it will just turn off the power to the charge port, which is disappointing since it doesn't seem to be staying on. Let me leave the key fob up in the cup holder area. I'm gonna press on and let's see what happens. All right, so it is on. So it is showing 7.5 amps, which matches what the car is set to. It is flashing green. So we are charging at eight amps, so everything is looking good. Let me see if this can stay on. So with the key fob sitting in the cup holder, the car seems to be staying on longer. If you just have the key fob in your pocket, it's gonna turn off after one to two minutes, which isn't very helpful. So it's been going for several minutes right now and it is at eight amps. I'm gonna crank up the amps in the Tesla and I wanna see how high we can go. So we are at eight. Let me bring it up to 12. 12 is the max for this plug that we're using. The EVSE only has a NEMA 515, which has a max of 12 amps. However, the outlet in the trunk does support a NEMA 520, which could go theoretically up to 15 amps. Actually, you know what? I do have an EVSE that has that connector, but I, I need to dig it out and try to find it. As long as the car is in ready mode, it appears the trunk outlet can stay on. So far the car's been charging the EVSE for about 17 minutes and we're at 12 amps, which is pretty good. So we're matching the amp load on the V2L adapter. However, we have to have the car in the ready state with the key fob in the center console. So unfortunately you can't close it, lock it because it will turn it off. And as, just as a precaution, I leave this window open in case I close the door with the key fob inside. You don't want it to accidentally get locked inside. And we're still just under 12 amps on the meter here. And the Tesla is still charging. I'm gonna see how long it can stay in this mode. I'm thinking somewhere between 30 minutes and one hour before it cuts off, but I just wanna verify that. So just hang in there and I'll get back to you in a little bit. By the way, I checked the 12 volt monitor that's attached by Bluetooth to my phone. And I noticed that while the car is in this mode where it's using the rear outlet, it is charging the 12 volt battery. I noticed a voltage of around 14, which is the same as what it does when you use the V2L adapter in the charge port. So using either of these external charging outlets will charge up the 12 volt battery, which is a good thing. All right, we seem to have our cutoff here. The car exited ready mode and turned off the outlet. We're getting uh, nothing out here. So yeah, 30 minutes is all you can expect out of this outlet here, unless you're sitting in the car and have your foot on the brake or a brick on the brake or, or something in the seat. So if you can fake it and keep it in ready mode, knock yourself out. But for normal intense, this rear outlet is only good for about 30 minutes. Let me switch out this EVSE with my Tesla EVSE, which has a NEMA 520 plug on it. And let's see if I can get 
the amperage any higher than the existing one here. All right, I pressed the brake and now I'm in ready mode. We have the outlet is on. I have my key fob right in the center here. I'm gonna keep the door open, window open too. Let's see if we get any power. So one problem is I can't use my meter here because it is limited to a NEMA 515 and not a 520. So I can't track how much usage is on this, but I am gonna uh, set this up so it charges at 12 amps starting off. Oh, it's not happy. It is not happy. Let's see what happened here. <clears throat> Unable to charge. All right, let's drop the amps down. Let me drop it to six and see if we can get it to work. Ooh, inadequate outlet grounding. That's a first. So let's see. I'm gonna disconnect this. All right, so it still appears to be on. So let me go back out here. I'm gonna reconnect this outlet. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it is not happy. It is not happy with this. Well, my test for the NEMA 520 plug is a failure. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not seem to like it at all. So I am going to have to say that if you're using this power outlet in the rear, just stick to a regular NEMA 515 plug and keep the amps at 12. And I don't think it's a good idea to use this one because it's it just not acceptable to the car that it's supposed to be charging to. So that's kind of a bummer, but at least we got one thing working today with this using the L1 EVSE that I have right here with the J1772 handle and the Tesla adapter. And I can charge my Tesla with that one using the cargo outlet. And if you want it to last more than two minutes, you need to have the key fob in the center console. And you need to have the car in ready mode. So that's about it for today's test of the cargo outlet. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.